Hello, here I am again, and uh, welcome to, well, this little shit thing. <laughs> I uh, want to take a break from uh, building synthesizers for a little bit, and uh, yeah, a nice little walk to the local second-hand store. They're open again. Yeah, I saw this thing. It cost a whole whopping 80 cents. Uh, I looked at it and I was like, you know what? <laughs> Why not? I'm, I'm gonna buy it. I've been playing with the idea to... Uh, but buy, buy a cheap ass uh, little toy um, keyboard and turn it into a little um, synthesizer. Yeah, uh, this thing, there's some space here for knobs and who knows what I can do with it. But this thing is, wow, it's all sorts of special. So yeah, let's turn it on. It has, well, it has this sound, which comes from the microphone. Yes, this thing has a microphone, believe it or not. And it sounds amazing. <laughs> it's just a cheap little dynamic microphone, I think, or maybe a uh, cheap little condenser. You can just about see it in there. But um, yeah, this thing picks up a lot of noise. Uh, just keep it next to any uh, power cable or whatever. And now the sounds on there um, are very minimal. You have piano, organ and melody. Now piano sounds like this. You can Im immediately hear that it's monophonic if I try to play a chord. tends to play the highest note. Now interestingly, if I hold a note and then play more notes, it uh, doesn't go back to playing that note. Uh, some uh, like monophonic toy keyboards do do that. that you, if you hold a, a, a note and then play another note, or play that new note and then go back to the old note immediately so you can make like these little I don't know, little trill effects and stuff. Unfortunately, this one doesn't do that, but if I switch to the organ sound, which is, well, the exact same sound, but with a different envelope. So yeah, nothing special, but interestingly, normally when I play a, a note, it immediately fades out. However, if I hold the note, it starts holding any note you play. So that's actually kind of a cool effect. Now, finally, there is melody, which um, Beautiful, so that just plays a bunch of melodies. Uh, yeah, that's basically it, that's the entire thing. Alright, so this is the back side, uh, here's just the, the battery uh, holder. Oops, and there went the screws. Where shall we start? Shall we start with the cardboard here? <laughs> uh, okay, so usually on these uh, cheap ass um, little uh, toy keyboards, they usually have a little bit of rubber or foam on the back of the speaker to stop it from vibrating, to keep it in place, that kind of stuff. This speaker, however, doesn't have any proper damping on the front. There's just nothing there. It's just on the plastic. And on the back side, they have a piece of cardboard. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I mean, it's cheap. That's that's something that's certain. Another interesting piece of construction here is this thing. So you know, normally just have uh, like some screws in here. There's one screw here which just is just normally mounted, and then here they decided to just you know just slap a piece of plastic over there. A kind of a MacGyver way of <laughs> keeping the PCB in place. It's just a piece of plastic, nothing special, and just. That just pushes the um, 
PCB in place and that's it. Now we're removing the uh, plastic uh, bracket. I noticed these two legs here just sticking through the board. <sighs> Turns out that it's uh, <laughs> there's actually an LED here which is the uh, power light and I just didn't bother to snip off the, uh, the legs. They just bent them and put them under the uh, little uh, piece of plastic there. But there's more interesting stuff on this thing, because this, this is the gift that just keeps on giving. Um, let's go over here to this part of the PCB. So, I was wondering like, what is this thing here? It kind of looks like there is a button here or something, but it's right under the keyboard. As you can see, like, the keyboard is right under there, so... And I think, yeah, what, what could, could that possibly be? Well, turns out... It's the chip. <laughs> I have never seen a chip with a with a cover like this. This is just a piece of plastic that they just glued in place. And yeah, I guess the, uh, the actual silicon die is under there. For some reason, they decided to yeah use this piece of plastic and just you know just push it through the PCB and put some big old glob of glue on there. Okay, so upon a bit of a closer inspection, um, signal goes from the chip through this, uh, what is this, 220k resistor over here, and then it gets mixed in with the microphone over here. It's passively mixed, but there's also the uh, volume slider for the um, notes that you play, which actually don't affect the microphone. The microphone just goes directly through this uh, a capacitor, there's a pull-up resistor here, a passive mixer to this LM386. The audio from the chip goes through this um, 220k resistor through the, um, uh, the volume, volume slider which actually just selects uh, a different value resistor here for the passive mixer here. And that then also goes through the uh, LM386 to the speaker. But that still leaves me with all these extra resistors over here and this capacitor. 10 microfarad, okay, that's a really big value actually. Uh, that would make a pretty slow clock actually. So I don't think this is the clock, but what it could be, it could be for the envelope. Because the piano has like this, uh, you know, the slow decaying envelope could be that they're uh, discharging this capacitor every time you press a key um, and that would control the envelope. I wonder if that's it. So that's some possibilities here. So, okay, I need to grab my scope. I know sort of where all the signal pads are. Um, so yeah, it's time to do something about it. I'm also going to snip off these two uh, LED leads because they're really annoying. Okay, now I've set it all up. I had this big old 6-volt uh, uh, power adapter. Since this uh, thing runs on 4 um, AA batteries, that means that it runs on 6 volts. So that was perfect. Lucky I had one of those. But let's take a look at uh, yeah, some of the signals, because uh, I didn't guess some things quite correctly. So yeah, uh, first of all, the capacitor over here. Um, I guessed that this uh, was for uh, charging and discharging envelopes, and that is indeed correct. Yeah, if you take a look at the um, oscilloscope here, I hope that's a little bit visible. Yeah, it should be just about visible. If I press a key, you'll see that um, it basically immediately discharges the capacitor. Now, this is interesting is that they actually. Um, uh, like all the signals are inverted. The, uh, the square wave, which is just a single pure square wave coming from the chip, Th that signal is uh, stuck to, uh, well, I'm gonna guess around uh, 5 volts or something. And um, whenever you press a key and the notes start playing, it actually pulls that, that line low with a square wave. So, um, and the same thing for the capacitor. Uh, currently there's going about uh, 3.8 volts going through this capacitor. Uh, as soon as you uh, press a key, 
and actually um, uh, ties that line to ground uh, immediately discharging the capacitor then the capacitor starts charging again and that's the curve you see here see, it starts charging now for the organ um, something sort of similar happens but it discharges it through a resistor I'm not sure if that's one of these two resistors here though I do see uh, that they are connected to the same um, same connection here so perhaps it discharges through one of these uh, resistors um, uh, which means you get a slight attack on the envelope and then and when you release a key it seems to discharge it through one of these other capacit uh, sorry through these one is these other resistors uh, fairly immediately um, well charging the capacitor again so you get a very short uh, release time so yeah I'm gonna guess uh, that these three resistors are responsible for uh, charging and discharging uh, this capacitor So here you can see the signal that um, the chip produces. It's just a single square wave, and this is exactly the same for the um, for the organ and the piano because well, they they basically sound the same. So yeah, very basic square wave, which means I could do some very very fun things with that. So yeah, uh, this resistor is responsible for that. So this resistor I'll remove. So I can uh, inject my own circuitry in the signal path. And we're gonna have some fun with this. Add some filters, add some effects. By the way, can I just say, look at these soldier joints. <laughs> that is just messy. And there's all sorts of crud on there too. And what was it? Somewhere around here. And there's like... All these little bits and pieces of solder, it's like it's splattered all over the place. Look at this. That's, that's all bits and bits of solder. Whoever soldered this, you probably are a Chinese sweatshop worker and I forgive you. <laughs> okay, let's desolder some things. Okay, well, I've done uh, quite a few things already. First thing I did is hot snot the bejesus out of this um, little speaker. <laughs> and um, so that's very sturdy in place now, so that doesn't rattle around anymore. I can uh, finick fox on sugar. Uh, I also uh, desoldered the resistors of uh, the audio output and uh, of the envelopes. Uh, put a little sticker here so I have a reference for later. Now I often uh, keep the uh, little legs I snip off components because they uh, are great for um, you know making little jumpers or connections on PCBs or whatever. In this case I use them to um, make little connection points on the top of the PCB because you know the, the solder side is hidden away. So I can't reach that and I just have to unscrew things and solder things and just put it back in place. If we do wires they may not make the right length. So instead I did this, I just have little solder uh, points on this side of the PCB now. I already uh, made use of them here. Uh, unsoldered the microphone because it was very noisy and annoying. Put two little wires in there and uh, now I decided, oh hey, let's put a little, uh, little jack. Uh, turn a little jack plug on there so I can, you know, also put other audio sources to this thing. Uh, another thing I did uh, was add a little power jack for 6 volts. The batteries, uh, of course, uh, can still just be used, but uh, alternatively, I can also use a 6 volt power adapter. Okay, well, I've uh, wired up the first uh, three potentiometers attack, decay, and release. Here they are, kind of. Stuffed in there, you know. I have nice notes. So that's the piano. So the piano only has the de decay control, which I can set very short. Or very long. That's also the organ, which uh, activates the. Uh, attack and also sort of the decay and the release uh, uh, organ please there we go 
So that's the organ. Now we have. Um, I'm just gonna put this on max. So we have the attack set to low, set to very high. I do like that they have this uh, this analog um, envelope generators. Actually, sounds very natural. This is better than most uh, toy keyboards. Um, now, uh, let me put the attack uh, fast. Interestingly, if you decrease the decay, this will also de uh, decrease the uh, release time, but a little bit differently than when you do it with the actual release. It also tends to fuck with the volume, so I just leave this one on maximum. And you can do kind of funky reverse uh, envelope things. So if I put the um, K down, it kind of messes with the attack and release and the volume. So yeah, that's the uh, very simple modification so far, but I have still have lots of space for more knobs and twiddlies and things. Time to do a schematic, yeah, or a simulation rather. Mm -hmm.